In this video, we're doing projects 11 through 21. And the first one here we've got is the flying saucer. Here's what our circuit looks like. And our objective is to make a circuit that launches a disc into the air. Now, when you look at this circuit, it looks similar in design to project 2. But with the motor, we've changed it around. See, the plus sign is over on this side. So we've got reverse polarity on it, so the motor will turn in the other direction, which means this should be pushing the air down and cause this to fly up. So let's turn on the circuit. Now the fan will stay on the motor as it's running, which you can feel air coming down here. And when I turn it off, it flies up and lands back down. So. That's basically Project 11. Now let's move on to Project 12. Here we have Project 12. It's decreasing saucer lift. Here's what our circuit looks like. And our objective is to reduce the height the saucer flies at. Now when we look at the circuit, the only difference between this and the previous one is we took the 3 out and replaced it with our 2.5 volt lamp. So when you look at this, this is similar to project number 5, where we had the lamp and fan in series, but again, the motor is turned the other way, so it's got different polarity. So when I turn it on this time, of course as we saw from project 5 in series, the lamp is dim, and the motor turns a lot slower. If I turn it off, see it's not actually generating enough lift to even get it off the motor. But depending on the strength of your batteries, when you turn it off, the saucer should fly up just a little bit and then land back down. Like this one just isn't producing enough. But that's how Project 12 is supposed to work. So let's move on to Project 13. Here we have Project number 13. This is the two-speed fan. This rest circuit looks like. And our objective is to show how to build a circuit that we can change two different speeds on the fan with. So in the circuit, of course, we've got a couple of two connectors here. We've got a switch. We have a motor, and the plus sign is toward this side, so it's going to spin the other way now. So it's going to push air against my hand, so we don't have that flying saucer anymore. But we also have our 2.5-volt lamp here, and then we got a push button. So how do you think it's wired up to activate a two-speed fan? Let's see. Let me turn it on. And as you see, it's acting like project number five. The lamp is in series with the motor, and so the motor is turning slowly. Now what happens if I push the button? The lamp goes out and the motor speeds up. If I release the button, the lamp comes back on and the motor slows down. What's happening is, is when the switch is off, current is flowing through the lamp and through the motor. So it's acting as like a series circuit. When I press the button, I bypass the lamp. And by doing that, all the current flows through the motor. So it actually increases its speed. So that's how project number 13 works, creating a two-speed fan. So let's look at project 14. Now with project 14, it talks about the fuse, and there's what the circuit looks like, and the objective here is to show how a fuse works in a circuit. And a fuse is meant to blow or cut the circuit if too much current is detected. And so this circuit looks just like the previous one in Project 13. And so we turn it on and everything is running fine, but see that this number two here is a fuse and I increase the current to the motor and it finds that that's too much well then the fuse blows and everything stops and the only way everything's going to work again is unless that fuse is put back so if you have something to like put a new fuse in then power is restored to the circuit so that's basically what project 14 is just showing how a fuse works so let's move on to project 15 We're doing project number 15. It's a musical doorbell. 
Here's what our circuit looks like. And our objective is to show how an integrated circuit can be made to work like a doorbell. Now the circuit itself looks similar to project number four with the music IC and their speaker and resistor. And of course our whistle chip, which would be here on the trigger, is now replaced by a push button. And we've got a red LED here that lights up when that's pushed. So when we turn the circuit on, like we found out with the previous ones with the music IC, the audio will play first. Now, of course, this is called a musical doorbell. So with the doorbell, we push the button, and it lights up the LED, and it activates the trigger on the music IC to play the music again. And of course, we can keep doing that over and over. It'll play over and over. And as we know from the previous projects with this, the 100 ohm resistor is limiting current to the speaker, which is why you get that quiet audio. You know, the amplitude or volume is not loud because we've got this current limiting resistor on the speaker. So that is how project number 15 works. So let's move on to project 16. Here we are with project number 16, the momentary alarm. This is what our circuit looks like. And our objective here is to show how we can make a momentary alarm that activates when we just push a button. Now, this circuit, of course, has got the speaker directly connected to it, so it's got full volume, because again, it's trying to work as an alarm. But when we turn it on, of course, it'll try to play first then I can hit the button and silence it. Now, this push button, unlike the previous project we were just doing that had it over here on the trigger, is on the hold position on the music I see. And hold means pretty much what the word is. You have to continuously provide a signal to it to make the music play. So, it will only play the music as long as that button is being held down, as long as they signal or current is being applied to that port. But as you notice, it will repeat as long as I continue holding the button down, but it won't play the entire song unless it's held down the, the whole time. So that's how project number 16 works. So let's move on to project 17. So we're now with project 17, which is our alarm circuit. Here's what the circuit looks like. And the objective here is just to show how an integrated circuit to be made to make real alarm sounds. Now this circuit is actually pretty basic. We've got our speaker, our slide switch, and then we have our alarm integrated circuit, which we saw all the way back in project 10. Now, this has three inputs on here. It's using the middle one, and then it's directly outputted to the speaker. So it's got max volume. So it will kind of only do one function when I turn on the switch. Which is just like a continuous alarm sound. And then to stop it, you just turn it off. And that's all Project 17 is. So let's go ahead and move on to Project 18. Now we're on project number 18, which is our laser gun. That's what our circuit looks like. And our objective here is to make an integrated circuit that sounds like a laser gun. Now this looks pretty similar to project 17, but we've put the 100 ohm resistor on the speaker now, and we've put a second 3 snap connector on the third input on here. So it's got another input to control the sounds on it. So we'll turn the switch on. Now, of course, it's quieter, and you may not be able to notice the difference between this and Project 17, but there is a slight difference in the way it sounds in this project because of that additional snap there, changing the audio input factors. Oh, this is quiet, you're not going to hear, but that's pretty much how Project 18 works. I don't know if it's done. So let's move on to Project 19. Now, Project 19, we're doing the Space War. That's what our circuit looks like. And the objective here is to take a closer look at the Space War integrated circuit. 
Now I'll put the speakers directly on here so everything's at max volume. We have a slide switch and we also have our push button to activate different sound effects from our Space War integrated circuit. So let's try listening to one from the push button. There's one sound effect. I can press it again. You get something different. I can press it another time. Get all kinds of sound effects. And then when I use the slide switch, it kind of does a continuous thing. And then I can kind of push the button here and mix the sound effects together. Basically, by operating both inputs, I can change the sounds and manipulate them all together. And that's how Project 19 works. So let's go on to Project 20. So now we're doing Project 20. And I'm going to have to do it with one hand here. But it's the light switch, and it's a modification to Project 19. And we replace our slide switch with a photo resistor and as you can see I'm putting my finger over it for a good reason because when the light is exposed to the photo resistor it turns that part of the circuit on and we get the space force sounds when it's in darkness it doesn't see anything so it can't generate any kind of signal but if I wave my hand I can make it change the sound effects Of course, I can still, I can still do this part of it too, and operate different sound effects there. But when I cover up the photoresistor again, everything stops. So that's how project number 20 works.